questions on the homework? Okay. It's algebra review three, one through five, right? Is that what it is? Ballparkish? Yes. Cool. What did we see? What can I do? What can I help you with? Number four gets a little confusing. You okay with that one? And I think, I think, I think Wednesday next week we will do our first assessment in here. What's nice about assessments in here? Yeah, first 20 by yourself, the rest of the class, compare, share, and revise. Kind of cool. It's not a bad gig. So during the first 20 minutes, don't submit it. It'll be on Schoology. Don't submit it, or I'll have to reopen it for you. Um, and then you can just kind of talk to each other. Cool. Are we okay with those problems, or does anyone need any help on those? Yeah. Two? All right, problem number two. They want us to do f at c minus d, which means I'm going to go with the equation, which is f at x equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Uh-oh, why'd, why'd you stop writing? Plus 1? It's because my shirt hit my other part. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take this, and I want to plug it in here and here. Now, here's the nice thing about this class. You are totally allowed to leave things dirty. What I mean by that is, as soon as my pen starts working, you can call that good. Okay? As soon as you do it, boom, you're done. You don't have to go foil this out and distribute here and combine like terms. Leave it dirty. Totally fine. Okay? Don't tell your other math teachers I let you do that because they're going to be like, oh, with the kids. Oh, oh. It's like, Phew. I'm looking for basically the standard on this is do you understand that you're going to replace X with C minus D? If so, do it. Not, oh, can they also do the algebra that goes along with it? Can they, do they know how to FOIL? Do they know how to distribute over a FOILed content? Do they know how to distribute over just a binomial? Do they know how to combine like terms? I'm not looking for those standards. I'm looking for can you replace C minus D with X. And that's it. Pretty cool. Now, of course, for number four, you have to make it undirty because that's the big thing with the derivative. But when you make it undirty, I'm not going to make it com complicated. I mean, basically, how, how this problem to make it undirty is to do this. I swear this tablet might or might not make it through the week. Uh, come on. Foil this, then distribute the two. Gets ugly. So leave it dirty. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah. Four? Okay. Number four... Number four is the basic foundation of something called a derivative. So I have g at x plus h minus g at x all divided by h. And they told us that g at x is 4x plus 7. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with x. So I'm going to get 4x plus 7, or x plus h, excuse me, and then plus 7. And then I'm going to go minus, and because I'm doing subtraction of a quantity, uh-oh, I have to restart this. Should be coming. Open. There we go. It's stuck. Who's texting me? <laughs> All right, let's 
let's go back to number four. So we have g at x, which is 4x plus 7. And we want to plug x plus h in first. Catch up with me. Come on. Hey, they just come on let me have the nice things. Then I have to subtract 4x plus 7. And this whole thing will be divided by h. So I'll go ahead and do the math here. Distribute here. That's going to give me 4x plus 4h plus 7. And then I have to distribute negative over the parentheses. It's all going to be over h. So then you say, okay, I have some like terms here. This and this are the same, but they're opposite signs. So what happens to them? They cancel. This and this are the same, like terms, but they're opposite values. So they cancel as well, which leaves you 4h over h. Tug of war between the h's. It's a tie, so they cancel each other out. So that's our answer. And again, that's the uh, long way to do a derivative or proving a derivative, which is fine. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions off that? Number five, you could definitely plug into Desmos. You're looking where it crosses the x-axis, so just give me the x answer. Okay. New stuff. Okay. We can. All right. So um, on this page, if we like, take a look at, say, number 14, they have negative 3 and they have 2 thirds. We want to figure out what the, the equation that goes with this. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go x equals negative 3, add 3 to both sides, so this becomes x plus 3. Let me stop there for a minute. Does that make sense what I did? I'm not done with the problem. I just got to that point. Then the other one, I have x equals 2 over 3. Multiply both sides by 3, so you get 3x equals 2. So this binomial is 3x minus 2. And then what you want to do is you want to FOIL this. Okay? x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Inside, 3 times 3x is 9x. And then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Oops, something didn't go. That should be a 9x. And then combine these like terms. And it's done. Okay? So this one I want you to actually do the work because they asked you to put it in standard form. So please don't leave that one dirty as x plus 3 and 3x minus 2. Okay? Um... Again, when it says find the zeros, plug it into decimals, look where it crosses the x-axis. Okay? It's okay if you leave your answers as decimals. I mean, if it comes out to 0.5, you're pretty safe saying 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half. If you have some weird, fret or weird decimal of 0.528, just leave it that. Don't, don't work any harder on that. And then let's get down to the bottom on the back of that page, which is the back side of Algebra Review 3, number 20. And it says, give the domain. Give the domain. Hello. Nice to see you. Sorry, I'm like, my, uh, my fish need help tying your shoes. Your fish need help? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's good to see you. All right, so down at the very bottom of this, it says find, give the domain. So what I'm going to do now that my thing is getting goofy is I'm just going to go to our friendly neighborhood Desmos
All right. Write these down for each one. Okay. So the first one, I have root x minus 4, where x minus 4 is under the root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go y equals, y equals square root x minus 4. Okay. Let's make that a little darker. Okay. And come over. All right. So this graph... This graph starts at positive 4. Agree? When we do domain, we go from left to right. So my furthest left place where my graph exists is, is at 4. Now I have to ask you a question, my friends. If I plug 4 back into my original problem, I get 4 minus 4, which is 0. Agreed? What's the square root of 0? 0. So my domain on this problem goes from, now this this will be what the domain is, I think we can do this, goes from 4, comma, and now I have to find it. It goes to infinity. Where is my infinity at? Hmm. I can't see infinity, so I'm going to just spell it out. I N F I. N I T Y. There it goes. So, oops, and I made a mistake. What kind of bracket should this first one be? Soft or hard? And why? Anybody know? Yeah, so it's a square bracket at the 4. Infinity never has a square bracket because we can't get there. Okay, that's why you can't add up all the natural numbers and get negative 1 12 because you're never going to get to infinity. But the square bracket on the 4 means that this point, if I took that 4 and I plug it into my original problem, it exists. Okay, square to 0, 0 is a number. Okay, so it's a square bracket, so my domain goes from four square bracket or hard bracket to infinity forever to the right. Does that make sense? That's just the domain. And then, can I move up, move away from this problem? We good? Uh, letter B, we want to go Y equals, and then... I have to see, do I have a way to do a third root? There's got to be a way. Functions. Let's see if I have a third root in there. There it is. So under functions, when you go to the very bottom, you do this nth root. So this will allow you to plug a 3 in there, arrow over, and plug an X in. And just go to, back to the home screen. So that appears to go forever left, forever right. So what is our domain? Yep, negative infinity to positive infinity. Soft brackets, a.k.a. parentheses on both, because I can't get to negative infinity, I can't get to positive infinity. This graph is continuous. It's... It go, will go forever from the left to all the way to forever in the right. Yes, it, as you go to the right, it seems to be increasing. As you go to the left, it seems like it is decreasing. But those are just different terms. May I move off that. Letter C. Letter C. We're going to go Y equals 3 divided by x minus 8. I think we might be able to plug this whole thing in. x minus 8. As long as that stays downstairs, life is good. I'm going to move it over a little bit. All right. Something is taking place with this graph. Agree? Meaning, as I draw, as I come from the very far left from negative infinity, as I continue to come to the right, 
it's going to shoot straight down there. This is what they, what they call an acid. It's going to continue down forever. And then at some point, it's going to hopscotch over whatever this line is here, and it's going to be way up here, and it's going to continue here. So we have we have both a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. If we were asking for the range, we would be worried about the horizontal asymptote. And my vertical asymptote, give me your best guess. What do you think this value is right here? Eight. Okay, I agree. Okay, eight right here is a vertical asymptote. And the reason that eight is a vertical asymptote is my original equation is x minus eight in the denominator. So if I plug eight into the denominator, I get eight minus eight, which is zero. Three divided by zero, or three over zero, is an undefined term. Okay, so our domain of this one, let's see how fancy I can get, negative i n f infinity. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, comma. And it's going to go right up to 8. And this is going to also be a parenthesis because I can't include it. And then I'm going to go open parentheses, 8 again, comma, and it's going to go to infinity. Okay, and that's my domain. So notice we have soft bracket at the 8. That means I approach the 8 from the right. I approach the 8 from the left. If we were working with something called limits, the limits wouldn't exist. Because if I come from the right, I go to a very small negative region. If I come from the right, I go to a very big region. Okay, so that's basically our domain of this particular function. Questions for me on that? Are you writing these down? <clears throat> then letter D gets a little goofy. Can I clear this? All right, I'm going to go y equals, y equals square root, x squared, minus 16. As long as the 16 stays underneath the denominator, that's great. Oh, no. This is not a continuous function because I'd have to lift my pencil to draw it. Okay, it has a cheap definition. Can I plug negative 4 into my original and get an answer that is 0? If I go negative 4, plug it in for x squared, what's negative 4 quantity squared? 16. What's 16 minus 16? 0. What's the square root of 0? 0. Cool, that works. And then can I plug 4 in as well? 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 16, 0. Squared of 0 is 0. So my domain of this one is going to go negative infinity. If any of you see an infinity sign while I'm doing any of this, let me know. Be a shortcut for me. To positive infinity. Oh, to no. To up to negative four. And that's going to be a square bracket. Oops. Didn't get, it didn't give me the other option for a square bracket. Why? What do I have to do? Shift. Oh, you are so smart. I love it. Thank you. And then it's going to go from here. And what's my other one going to be? 4, comma infinity. And then parenthesis. That's it. That's my domain. Does that make sense? And I'll leave you to do letter E. So what I would like you to do, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to have to go with this.
Deal? That's all I have for. You. I have for. You.